do welcome to this channel once again this is our 10th uh, discussion regarding the current affairs of political science after this discussion we would take one or two discussions more regarding that and we will complete the full current affairs uh, related to uh, to related to polity and governance if you remember if you are watching my videos i told you in the beginning that there are many acts which were introduced then and we will see where they reach by time and today we have to discuss such things in detail <clears throat> or the points which we have to discuss here uh, we had already discussed them but we will see what were the new decisions taken regarding them so with regarding to that without wasting any time let's come to this uh, to this discussion let us start it here by taking criminal law reforms as in our previous uh, discussions we discussed about how parliament introduced bills to replace <coughs> or to overhaul the country's criminal justice system in which they introduced bharatiya naya yes samhita to replace ipc 186 1860 and bharatiya nagar suraksha samhita to replace crpc and bharatiya saksha adhiniyam 2023 to replace indian evidence act so with regarding this this law these bills got the presidential accent presidential assent and the president of india gave assent to the three significant bills to overall criminal uh, country's criminal justice system so let us discuss a little bit more about them we had already discussed uh, way much which was needed and we will see will it would be a recapping session for this discussion for this topic so let us see what this second slide brings us in it what was the need for the reform so uh, we had already discussed it before and we will recap it little bit it was first we have given some points here to modernizing the criminal justice system like the ipc or evidence act and a large section of the crpc or older than independent india uh, they were you know created before we got independence and they do not properly reflect the current norms of criminal jurisprudence <coughs> so uh, those laws does not fit with the time as we had evolved way long from those times and similarly uh, you know how we treated the acts then and why how we treat similar acts now it has changed and so there is a need for modernizing the criminal justice system so and second point which we discussed it was about addressing large pendency and timely justice as we know in our courts there is huge pendency of cases and it takes a huge amount of time to address them there are many under trials there so with regarding to that it is necessary to reform these cases these laws and we have increasing conviction rate <coughs> so it is one of the criteria we should change the definition of uh, different crimes we have to we needed to change uh, money laws which were very much old then and we need to add many laws which are needed now for example cyber crime related uh, uh, things we need to add so there are increasing conviction rates or one of the reason for that we need to reform it and we have various recommendation committees incorporating recommendations of various high level committees these include the recommendation of law commission mali math committee and justice verma committee on aspects related to arrest confession bail death penalty etc so let's move to our next slide
she discuss about uh, Bharti and Naya Sanhita 2023. As we know that it replaces IPC Act 1860. Let us see what are it is. Uh, we had already discussed about the background how this IPC came into existence. We don't need to discuss that here, but we will see. We will directly jump to the key provisions of this uh, Act. <coughs> here, the, some key provisions are. Uh, one is community service. It it is proposed to provide for the first time community services as one of the punishments for petty offenses. Then we have sexual offenses against women. It increases the threshold for gang rape victims to be classified as a major from 16 to 18 years of age. So it increases the threshold for gang rape victims. It also criminalizes sexual intercourse with a woman by deceitful means. For example, if anybody has a girlfriend or we give them fake promises that we will marry them and uh, have these uh, uh, heinous things and do these heinous things, then it also punishes uh, in it sexual offenses against women. It comes. Uh, so before doing any such thing, we should keep everything in mind. Then we have sedition. It replaced it. It removes the offense of sedition. It inserted penalizing the folly. As we had already discussed about it, let us recap it. For example, it replaced the sedition totally and it introduced different things in it. For example, exciting or attempting to excite succession, armed rebellion or subversive activities encouraging feeling of separatist activities or endangering the sovereignty or unity and integrity of India. So these are some of the few provisions which were inserted. Then about terrorism, it defines terrorism as an act that intends to threaten the unity, integrity, security or economic security of the country or strike terror in the people or any section of people in India or in any foreign country. So it defined the terrorism in better way. And about organized crimes, it defines organized crime as any continuing unlawful activity, including kidnapping, extortion, contract killing, land grabbing, cyber crime, etc., carried by an individual or a group, either as a member or on behalf of an organized crime syndicate. So it defined the organized crimes also and about murder or grievous hurt by group on certain grounds when a group of five or more persons five or more persons acting in concert commits murder or causing grievous hurt on the ground of race caste or community sex place of birth language personal belief or any other similar grounds we can it is a morally related to lynching activities regarding, you know, uh, <clears throat> where lynching happens some, it is based on the caste, religion, it is based on the sec uh, uh, sexual orientation of the person and uh, other things. So, if we can say it overhauled most of the things which were necessary and which are in need of which are the need of the time in it so if we have to remember in it it is Bhartiya Nyaya Sanhita which replaces IPC 800-1860 these are the provisions the important provisions we should which we should know and which we should get well prepared of now let's move to next to Subtopic of this is Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Samhita 2023. It replaces the Criminal Procedure Code 1973. And about its background, we had already discussed in our previous uh, discuss discussion. So let's jump to the three key provisions directly. In it, it a detention of under trials. One of the key provision, first-time offender who have completed one-third of the maximum period of imprisonment 
specified for such offense shall be released on bond. If anybody has completed one by third of his imprisonment time, he shall be released on bond completely, completed on bond. And it, if an accused has spent half of maximum period of imprisonment specified for an offense, he shall be released by the court on bail. If he has uh, uh, spent half of the time, he should be re released on the bail. But this does not apply to offenses punishable by death or life imprisonment and persons against whom proceedings are pending in more than one offense. If more than, for example, for death penalty or uh, life imprisonment, these uh, uh, provisions which we discussed under detention of under trials, it does not apply to them. For example, completing one by third, then releasing on the bond or completing half, then releasing on the bail. These provisions does not apply to those who are under <coughs> life imprisonment or death who had death penalty or who has multiple uh, who has um, uh, multiple cases who, who is who has been imprisoned under multiple offenses more than one offense. then we have medical examination in it it is one of the key provisions of this act any in it, any police officer can request medical examination of the accused in certain cases, including rape cases. So, it gave power to any police officer who can request medical examination of the accused. Then we have forensic investigation in it. In it mandates forensic investigation for offenses punishable with at least seven years of imprisonment. If yes, in it, we should remember that if a state does not have forensic facility, it shall utilize such facility in another state. For example, if any state in which the crime has happened, they don't have any forensic laboratory, they can go for the another state for this. <coughs> then it has provisions related to signature and finger impressions. It mandates forensic investigation for offenses punishable with at least seven years of imprisonment. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, it is about you. Uh, signature and finger impressions. It empowers a magistrate to order any person, whether arrested or not, to provide specimen signatures, handwriting, finger impressions, and voice samples. Then we, it also defines the timeline for various procedures. It prescribes timelines for various procedures. For instance, submission of medical reports to investigating officer, giving judgment, informing the victim of progress of investigation and framing of charges. So this was about <coughs> Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita. We had already, if you want to know more about it, please refer to our previous and discussions we have discussed it in a better way <coughs> here we are just recapping few provisions and it was necessary to include this news uh, in today's video so that we should know what are the developments since then since we are uh, you know discussing these things then let's move to the evidence act bharatiya saksha adhi Niyam 2023, it replaces the Indian Evidence Act 1872. Its uh, key provisions are admissibility of electronic or uh, digital records as evidence. Uh, it provides that the electronic or digital records will have the same legal effect as paper records. Earlier, it was diff different because when these provisions were brought in during 80s, late 80s, those times we did not have such invention which we are having now. So it is necessary to include all these things. And it expands electronic records to include information stored in semiconductor memory or any communication devices. For example, smartphones, laptops, emails, server logs, etc., pen drivers also. And we have oral evidence. Oral evidences include statements made before courts by witness in relation to a fact under inquiry. The act allows oral evidence to be given electronically. Then we have joint trials. A joint trial, ref well, we should know what it is. It refers to the trial of more than one person for the same offense. 
the act it is that a trial of a multiple persons where an accused has absconded or has not responded to an arrest warrant will be treated as a joint trial so this was about these uh, <coughs> laws these acts uh, which president gave accent assent to and we had already discussed about them if you need to know more about these acts about some about background of these uh, provision these acts please refer to our previous videos you would know better about that them so let's move to our next slide it talks about crime in crimes in india <laughs> in it the ncrb Na national crime record bureau released its annual report on crime in india for the year 2022 what it is the complication of data on reported crimes across the world across the country what are the reported crimes it uh, complete uh, it collects the data and uh, compiles them into this uh, record into this report and it follows principal uh, offense rule what is principal offense rule if any offenses are registered in a single fir case only the most heinous crime that is the one that attracts maximum punishment will be considered as uh, counting unit for example if any case uh, uh, <coughs> there would be a rape and uh, 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 that uh, person has been beaten then rape would be added because it would be more heinous so let's see what are the key findings of this report here we will we will discuss it with regard to 2021 uh, findings here uh, here we have overall crimes 58.2 lakh cognizable crimes were registered if we see them with regard to the 2021 report it has declined by 4.5 percent so if you know the math you can uh, know if you are well knowledgeable about uh, c set know what is the 4% of uh, for 58.2 lakh and subtract uh, that 4% from it you will get the crimes which were registered in 2021 uh, crimes against women 4.4 high lakh crimes against women were registered which ha it has increased by 4% since 2021 so crimes with regard to women have increased and again so we can see settle by growing time this thing should had gone down but it is still increasing so we should assess our society uh, where we are living uh, what thinking we are in and regarding that we can assess the conditions of women and find these things then uh, crimes against child it is overall 1.6 lakh crimes were uh, registered against child which has also increased by 8.7 percent so in this regard also we are increasing which is very bad then crimes against senior citizens around 28,000 crimes were reg registered in 2022 against senior citizens it has also increased by 9.3 percent then crimes against scs and sts <coughs> it went up by 14 percent for sts and 13 percent for scs since 2021 and crime and uh, cyber crime we have 65,000 cases uh, which were registered in 2022 and if we compare it with 2021 it has increased by 24.4 percent and offenses against state a total of 
<coughs> sorry first uh, yeah offenses against state a total of 5610 cases have been registered which in it also it has increased by 8% 8.6% and with the related to environment related uh, 52000 cases were registered under environment related offenses here we are uh, getting some progress it has decreased by 17.9% since 2021 so this is these are the findings of the report published by annual report published by ncrb so here we can uh, you know find some data if this if such question comes to our comes in our mains exam to discuss about the crimes in india we can put this data into the now let's move to our topic it's about chief election commissioner and other election commissioners act 2023 uh, as i had already told you uh, the composition of uh, the selection committee so here we will discuss in, in a proper way uh, about this act present president gave her assent the act replaces the electronic commission conditions of service of election commissioners and uh, transactions of business act 1991 so what was the <coughs> aim of the act the act seeks to regulate the appointment conditions of service and term of of the office of chief election commissioner and other election commissioners and to produce uh, and the procedure for transaction uh, transaction of business by the election commission so it was uh, it is related to that let's jump what is the selection the selection committee how it is formed and what are its members selection committee it includes prime minister as chairperson then we have leader of opposition or leader of the largest opposition party in the lok sabha then we have unit union cabinet minister to be nominated by the prime minister this is the selection uh, composition of the selection committee then after that we have search committee which shall this this search committee shall prepare a panel of five persons for consideration of the selection committee so they prepare the panel of five persons which are to be nominated for a chief election commissioner or election commissioner they prepare that panel and uh, give it for the consideration of the selection committee in which in selection committee we, we know we already know that it includes prime minister leader of opposition and union cabinet minister so they will then decide from these five members who will be the chief election commissioner and who will be the election commissioner and it is to be headed by the ministry of law and justice and comprising two other members so uh, this point we have to remember who should head the search committee it should be headed by the ministry of law and justice and it should comprise it should be comprising of two other members which are not below the rank of secretary secretary to the government of india and what is the eligibility for the chief election commissioner and election commissioner a person who is holding or have held the post equivalent to the rank of secretary at least if he should hold the rank of the secretary or is still in service as the secretary to the government and second should be person of integrity who has knowledge of and experience in management and conduct of business he should have the knowledge his salary should be equal to the judge of the supreme court and term of office is 6 years from the day of appointment or till he attains the age of 65 years and they are not eligible for the reappointment so this is the eligibility criteria for them what are the concerns with the act <coughs> concern the independence of the election commission it is one of the concern because this the selection committee which has two members committee has majority of members from the government of the day which may undermine the independence of the election commission the act of the chief justice of india from the selection committee as we already know the earlier selection committee included chief justice of india this act to drops him and instead of him they inserted 
cabinet union minister uh, or we can say <coughs> union cabinet minister which to which is to be nominated by prime minister so uh, it undermines the independence of the election commission then we have vacancy in selection com committee uh, the act upholds the validity of the selection committee even if there is vacancy or defect in constitu uh, constituting the committee for example the post of the leader of opposition in Lok, Lok Sabha may be vacant if Lok Sabha is dissolved in such a case the selection committee will consist exclusively of the prime minister and the union cabinet minister for example if a leader of opposition is not there the Lok Sabha is dissolved then the selection committee will only consist of prime minister and his cabinet minister so this is one of the issue in it and it undermine it undermines the role of search committee if search committee they will recommend uh, five members and, and the selection committee can uh, choose anybody either from them or they can take anybody outside the panel chosen by search committee if the act provides the selection committee may go beyond the name suggested by the search committee the selection committee may go beyond the name suggested by this uh, search committee and also limiting eligibility criteria by limiting the eligibility criteria of chief election commission and election commission to civil servants the act may exclude other qualified individuals for, from the post so these are few of the concerns with related to, related to, <coughs> to the search selection committee and chief election commissioner and election commissioner with regarding to this act which we discussed now let's move to the uh, one of the important uh, topic in today's discussion it is about press and registration of periodicals act 2023 president gave assent to this act repealing the colonial era law of press and registration of books act 1867 so this law replaces the press and registration of books act 1867 so let's discuss more about its brief history in the sen first we got censorship of press act of 1799 under lord wellesley you know these points they are very much important for your prelims please go through them because you know this press act is in use and it is the norm of upsc they frame questions most with regarding to current affairs whether it would be the historic side of that economic side of that or scientific side of that you we have to be well versed in every aspect so please go through these um, subtopics and at least remember the points which i am going to tell you here so first the censorship of press act of 1799 under lord wellesley this act was uh, uh, to silence the press before a potential french invasion of india However, it was attracted in 1818 by Lord Hastings. So, censorship of Press Act of 1799. Then we have Licensing Regulation Ordinance 1823 by John Adams. Licensing Regulation Ordinance 1823 under Acting Governor General John Adams. The ordinance had a draconian provision that no one could start or continue to use a press without registration ram mohan roy's in it we should remember that raja ram mohan roy's miratul akbar had to cease publication due to this act so it may come in the exam by which act raja ram mohan roy's miratul akbar was seized had to see Raja Ram Mohan Rai has to seize the publication of Miratul Akbar. So we should remember the licenses, licensing regulation ordinance, 18, ordinance 1823 by then acting governor general John Adams. Then came the Press Act of 1835. 
the press act of 1835 under governor general metcalf this act was seen as a ray of liberation and thus earned metcalf the respectable title of liberator of the indian press so if uh, in it a question would be framed like who is known as the liberator of the indian press so we should know metcalf is that person <coughs> then we have licensing act of 1857 since due to the revolt of 1857 this act emerged with imposed licensing restrictions restrictions in addition to the pre-existing registration procedure then came the press and registration of books prb act 1867 under viceroy lord john lawrence so this act which was uh, you know change which which is now changed it came under john lawrence who was then viceroy of the india <coughs> so let's see key provisions of the prb act 1867 and 2023 first registration of periodicals in 1867 the act provided for the registration of newspaper periodicals and books and press and registration of periodicals act of 2023 periodic in it in the 2023 act periodicals do not include books or scientific and academic journals books are outside the purview of the act so in 2023 books are not included as periodicals but in 1867 uh, books were included in it then we have foreign periodicals uh, in 1867 these there were no provisions for registration of foreign periodicals there were no provisions regarding that in 2023 act which we are which was brought in recently affect smile affect smile of a foreign periodical may be printed in india only with the prior approval of the central government by affect smile means an exact reproduction of the original so we have the provisions for the registration of foreign periodicals then we have declaration of printing press the act to provide that a declaration specifying the printing publisher be made to the district magistrate the dm send the declaration to the press register who then issued a certificate of registration dm would send that declaration to the press register in 1867 act but in 2023 act what we have it act allows the publisher of a periodical to obtain a registration certificate by filling an online application with the press registrar general and specified local authorities then we have registration of printing press the 1867 act required a printing press to be declared before the dm but in the 2000 23 act allows for information regarding printing press to be submitted through an online portal then what are the penalties prb act 1867 had severe penalties leading to conviction and imprisonment up to 6 months for various violations of the act but the 2023 act seeks to decriminalize the colonial era state statue by replacing jail term with fine so in 2023 act we don't have jail term for that so these were the key key then yeah regarding cancellation of registration in the act 1867 only the dm could cancel the declaration of a periodical uh, and in 2023 it and the prp act 2023 empowers the press registrar general to suspend cancel the certificate of registration also a person who has been convicted of a terrorism act or unlawful activity or has acted against the security of the state will not be allowed to publish periodicals any person who has been convicted of ter- ter- terrorist act- uh, activities or unlawful activity is not allowed to publish a periodical so such as newspapers or magazines all that stuff so this was uh, the, these are the key provisions of the act and we compared uh, what, uh, what was in 18 the act of 1867 and what were the changes in 2023
act. For example, let's recap it. Registration periodicals books were included in 1867, but in 2023, books are not included. Foreign periodicals, there were no provisions for foreign periodicals, but here in 2023, there are the provisions. Then we have declaration for a printing press, registration of printing press. Here we have online declaration in 2023, but here in 1860, we have to, to go to the DM. His, then he would suggest to the registrar general. Then regarding penalties, uh, their jail term was included. In 2023 act, jail term has been cancelled and cancellation of registration. DM was the authority to cancel the declaration of a periodical, while in PRP Act, it, empower, it empowers the PRP 2023 Act, it empowers the press registrar general to suspend, cancel the certification of registration. And also, if a person is convicted of terrorism act or uh, unlawful activity, he is not able, he is not allowed to publish his periodicals, whether it would be newspaper or magazine or whatever. So these were few <coughs> provisions of these acts. Then let's move to the Telecommunication Act 2023. In it, the president gave assent to Telecom Bill 2023 to replace 138 year old Indian Telegraph Act. The act seeks to regulate activities related to telecommunication and provide a new legal framework for the telecom sector. The act replaces what are the acts which were replaced in it. The act replaces the Indian Telegraph Act 1885, the Indian Wireless Telegraphy Act 1933, and the Telegraph Virus Unlawful Possession Act 1950. It also amended the Telegram Regulatory Authority of India Act 1997. So, 130 year old Indian Telegraph Act has been replaced by this Telecommunication Act of 2023. It has amended the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. So, in it, <coughs> question can be framed like that. Uh, in, in the Telecommunication Act of 2023, uh, it uh, amended the Indian Telegraph Act 1885. It is not true. It amended the Telegram Regulatory Telecom Regulatory Authority of India Act 1997. So it replaced, we should, uh, you know, we have to keep the key. We should be keenly studying while reading these lines. Here it replaced the Indian Telegraph Act 1885. It replaced the Indian Wireless Telegraphy Act 1933 and Telegraph Wires Unlawful Possession Act 1950. And what it amended it amended the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. We know the difference between amending and replacing very well. So what are its key provisions? <coughs> uh, assignment of spectrum. S spectrum allo allocation will be through auction and for specified uses on an administrative basis. What are the specified purposes included? National security and defense, disaster management, weather forecasting, transport, satellite services, BSNL, MTNL, and public broadcasting services. These include the special specified purposes included and for others, and thus uh, spectrum allocation will be through auction. And and uh, in this also, we should know that the, it was the first time administrative allocation will be done of spectrum of the satellite broadband services in line with global norms. Administrative allocation uh, will be done of spectrum for the satellite broadband services. So we should know then we have appointment, uh, appoint, appointments to try act. The try act has been amended to Hello, <coughs> Telegram Regulatory Authority of India Act 1997. Uh, these are the following amendments to allow individuals with at least 30 years of professional experience to serve as the chairperson and at least 25 years of professional experience to serve as member. These were the amendments, important amendments in it, which we should remember. And we had adjudication process 
appointment of an adjudicating, adjudicating officer to conduct inquiries against civil offenses, appeals against the orders of the committee in connection to breach of terms and conditions may be filed with the Telecom Dispute Settlement and Appellate Tribunal within 30 days. We have protection of users. Central government may provide for measures to protect users, for example, prior consent to receive specified messages, creation of do not disturb register, registers, and allowing users to report malware or specified messages. Then we have right of way. Entities building infrastructure can seek right of way, facilitate, facilitating the use of property or public or private property. And we have powers of interception and search. Message can, messages can be intercepted, monitored, or blocked on certain grounds, including security of the state, public order, and prevention of incitement of offenses. So, interception is allowed in it. Then we have authorization for telecom related activities. Prior authorization of central government is needed to provide, operate, maintain or expand new telecommunication services and to possess radio equipment. Then it regulates OTTs also OTT platform will not be sorry OTT platform will not be regulated under the Telecommunication Act 2023. So this is the point here which we need to remember if such question is framed that does it include OTT regulation? No, it does not include OTT. Regulation of OTTs is not included in it. We should know that. <coughs> so what are the concerns regarding this act? Here we have privacy concerns because of interpretation and monitoring of the messages which can be misused leading to issues like data leakages. Then we have lack of clarity in definitions, defini definition of telecommunication service services provided is broad and open to interpretation. This may take this ambit online platforms like WhatsApp as well. When then we have delegated legislations, the government may add, modify or remove offenses in the third schedule to the act by a notification. It has been debated that such changes should only be through an act of parliament. So these are few concerns with regarding to this bill. <coughs> Let's go back to 2018, uh, 2019, sorry, when the abrogation of Article 370 came into existence. So, you know, why it is in news? because a constitutional bench of Supreme Court recently upheld the validity of Union Government's 2019 decision to repeal the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. You know, this was challenged when, 2000, when Article 370 was abrogated. It was then challenged in the Supreme Court and finally Supreme Court gave its verdict and it upheld the validity of Union Government government's 2019 decision to repeal the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. If we will go through little background in it, uh, if we remember on August 5, 2019, President of India, he promulgated an order constitution application to Jammu and Kashmir order 2019, which stated that the provisions of Indian constitution are applicable to the state also. And with that, Article 35A was automatically scrapped. Then, <clears throat> then also Parliament enacted the Jammu and Kashmir Organization Act 2019. So, in it, what we have to remember that the SC uh, uh, upheld the validity of this abrogation of Article 370. Let's discuss more about it. What is the historical context? First, we should know instrument of accession. What is that? Uh, on October 1947, Maharaja Hari Singh, the last ruler of Jammu and Kashmir, signed the instrument of accession through which he agreed to accede his state to the dominion of India in 1948. Then, what, uh, then we had temporary provisions for Jammu and Kashmir. Article 370 was placed in part 21. 
So what Constitution of India came into force on 26 January 1950 under the Constitution Article 370 was placed in Part 21 titled as Temporary and Transitional Provision. We have Article 370 what it deal, dealt with. It includes except for defense, foreign affairs, finance and communication. Nations Parliament needed the state's go state government's concurrence for applying all other laws. So state government's extent was, uh, acceptance was needed for other laws. And further, it stated that except Article One, which says <coughs> India, Bahar, Union, India, the Union of State. Well, we know that what Article One says. India, the Bharat, which is Union. So. Except Article and and also Article 370, no other part will apply to Jammu and Kashmir directly. And also Article 370 could not be amended unless the Constitution Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir con consented to it. So these were uh, the key provisions of this uh, article and also Article 35A of the Indian Constitution. It stemmed out of Article 370 and gave powers to the JNK Assembly to define permanent residents of the state, their special rights and uh, and privileges. So, what were the key provisions of this Act? If we would, um, uh, you know, summarize it, Article 370, it includes except for defense, foreign affairs, finance, and communication. Parliament needed a state government's concurrence for applying all other laws and further it stated that except article 1 which declared India as union of state and article 370 no other part will apply to Jammu and Kashmir then also article 370 could not be amended unless the constitution assembly of Jammu and Kashmir consented to it and also article 35a which stemmed, which stemmed out of Article 370 and gave powers to the JNK Assembly to define permanent residents of the state, their special rights and, and privileges, who are the permanent residents of the state, their domiciles of the JNK, their special rights and privileges. Now let's discuss about the judgment, what the Supreme Court, Supreme Court <laughs> included in its judgment. It first said that there is no internal sovereignty of the state. The SC upheld that JNK did not retain any element of sovereignty after it, its accession to India in 1947 when it uh, joined with India. It had no sovereignty of its own. Court relied on Yuvraj Kiran Karan Singh's successor to Maharaja Hari Singh proclamation which stated that the provisions of Indian constitution would govern the relationship between Jammu and Kashmir and India. And apart from Article 1 and 30, 370 of the Indian constitution, the court cited Section 3 of Jammu and Kashmir constitution, which stated that JNK is and shall be an integral part of the Union of India. Section 3 of Jammu and Kashmir constitution, it stated that Jammu and Kashmir will be an integral part of the India. And then what was the nature of the Article 370? Thus, SC held that Article 370 is a temporary transitional provision. Court relied on historical context for the inclusion of Article 370 and the placement of Article 370 in Part 21 of the Constitution to conclude that it is a temporary provision. And court held that the dissolution of the Constitution Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir could not limit the powers of the president to abrogate Article 370. Then, <coughs> constitutionality of president's proclamation, the Supreme, the Supreme Court, Court upheld the presidential proclamation of August 2019. The presidential order of 2019 amended Article 367 and declared that the expression constitutional assembly of the state in Article 373 shall be read to mean Legislative Assembly of the State, Constitutional Assembly of the State should be read as Legislative Assembly of the State. Then we have, then it further <coughs> declared about the powers of the President during emergency. 
as he held the uh, supreme court held that declaration of state emergency and subsequent actions of the president should have reasonable nexus relying on the judgment uh, in sr bombay case it also held that actions of president during a state emergency were open to judicial scrutiny so question may be framed in our prelims uh, is uh, during uh, emergency is uh, president's Uh, can is can president's order uh, you know question may be asked like that during emergency can a question can be asked like can action of a president during a state emergency is open for a judicial scrutiny uh, we should know it is open and truth and reconciliation commission it talked about the court recommended that the center should set up a truth and reconciliation commission just like south africa south africa did in its post apartheid era the commission what would be it is funny the commission would investigate and report on the violation of human rights both by state and non state actors in jammu and kashmir then elections to the legislative assembly it stated that uh, court directed that election commission of india to conduct elections to the legislative assembly of jammu and kashmir by 30th september 2024 court stated that the restoration of statehood should take place at earliest so these were the arguments or uh, points given by the supreme court when it gave its landmark judgment regarding abrogation of article 370 where uh, supreme court upheld the decision of the president and then, then we have another important topic in today's discussion it is about the expulsion of lawmakers in it lok sabha in india has expelled one of its members accused of accepting gifts and illegal gratifications lok sabha has created an ethics committee Ethics, ethics committee report found member guilty of unethical conduct and contempt of the house so he was expelled so expulsion of law makers in india it can be constitutional as well as legal while as a ruler while as rules of the house provide for suspension of mp members can also be expelled through these rules legal basis of suspension and expulsion of mps the president the presiding officer of the house has the power to force a member to withdraw from the house in case of extreme misconduct the house may expel a member so <clears throat> what are the rules in lok sabha and rajya sabha rules of procedure and conduct of business related to suspension in lok sabha and rajya sabha we have rule 373 it in uh, lok sabha it empowers a presiding officer to order an mp to withdraw during the remainder of the day's sitting and similarly in rule 255 it allows the chairman to direct any member to withdraw immediately from the house for disorderly conduct for the remaining of the day then we have rule 374 and 256 rule 374 is related to rai sabha what it says it allows the presiding officer to name the legislature and then a motion can be moved to suspend the mp from a period not exceeding the remainder of the session similarly uh, rule 256 it allows a chairman to name the member disregarding their authority or abusing the rules the house may then adopt a motion suspending the member for a period not exceeding the remainder of the session then we have rule 374a it is particularly for uh, lok sabha it bro it was brought in 2001 it allows the speaker to name an mp who will then automatically stand suspended for 5 days or the remaining part of the session whichever is less uh, this rule is not found in rai sabha because rai sabha cannot suspend its members without passing a motion we should know that expulsion and disqualification are totally two different things the constitution provides for both expulsion and disqualification under disqualification member of the parliament cannot contest the election further while under expulsion he can 
So this was about the exposition of <coughs> of lawmakers. Let's move to our last but very important uh, topic, which may be you know asked in our exam. It is NCC National Cadet Corps. So it was 75th anniversary of NCC was celebrated in 2023. National Cadet Corps, the largest uniformed youth organization in the world, celebrated its 75th anniversary in 2023. Uh, we should know that it came into existence under the National Cadet Corps, Corps Act 31 of 1948. Committee headed by it, uh, the committee headed by Pandit H. N. Kunzuru recommended a credit organization to be established in schools and colleges at national level. What is the aim of uh, NCC? Its aim is to create organized, trained and motivated youth to provide leadership in all walks of life and always available for the service of the nation. It is to motivate the youth to take up a career in the armed forces <coughs> its aim one of the aim is to develop character uh, commandership discipline leadership secular outlook spirit of adventure and the ideal of selfless servicing service among the youth of the country it is a tri service organization it is had covered in new delhi so what are its contributions, important contributions of NCC assistance during wartime. Uh, it had assisted many times, for example, during Indochina War 1962, India Park War 1965 and 71, and Kargil War 1990, 90, 90, NCC candidates provided instrumental help. Then social service, NCC has been actively participating in social service activities like the blood donation drives, anti-polio drive, plantation drives, etc. Then rescue and relief work they had done uh, for NCC candidates are the first to reach the affected location and provide selfless assistance to the victims during uh, calamities like earthquake, cyclone, flood, train accidents, etc. For example, during Bhopal gas tragedy 1984, NCC cadets immediately engaged themselves in evacuation of casualties and mastering medicine, etc. What are just other contributions? Developing leadership and officer-like qualities among the youth, increasing mutual understanding, trust, friendship, and peace among the countrymen. And we should know that it is very much different from NSS, which is National Service Scheme. While both are voluntary in nature, there are certain differences also. We should know that NCC, it comes under the Ministry of Defense and NSS Ministry of Youth Affairs and Supports. NCC comes under Ministry of Defense, while as NSS comes under Ministry of Youth Affairs and Supports. NCC was established in 1948. NSS, it was established in 1969. We note aim of the NCC to foster disciplined selfless youth leadership for national service and military careers while NSS it is it is mainly its aim is to for the development of students personality through community service uh, NCC is National Cadet Corpus Act 31 of 1940 established through uh, National Cadet Corpus Act 31 of 1948 and NSS, it is a central sector scheme. NSS is a central sector scheme. Uniform, uh, compulsory uniform for NCC cadets, and there is no uniform prescribed for NSS volunteers. <clears throat> Who can join junior division wing students from schools of 13 years or more of age? Senior division, here in NCC, we have junior division wing and senior division wing. In junior division wing, we have students from schools of 13 years or more of age. In senior division wing, we have students from colleges and 11th and 12th classes. 
for uh, NSS we have 11th and 12th class students and all students of technical institutions graduate and postgraduate at college and university level of India so these are the differences which we should know which I had you know a kind of recorded that I forgot to mention it in this slide so we should know these are very much important and such questions may be asked in exam for example NCC it comes under which ministry uh, and NSS it comes under which ministry they might be interchanged in and they may say that in NSS uniform is necessary which is not it is necessary in NCC so such questions they do frame NSS is a central sector scheme and uh, uh, establishment uh, of NCC it was through National Candidate Corps Act 31 of 1948 <coughs> so this was about the today's discussion I hope I was able to make you understand the points which were necessary for your exam and till now we had completed 10 classes regarding our polity and governance in it almost we had discussed 40 to 50 concepts which were in news and we had discussed them in very much detail so if such questions would be asked in exam you should not be you should be able to uh, you know solve them very easily and I hope you would succeed and mostly we have one or two sessions remaining for our uh, polity and governance then we would complete it and uh, you know according to my experience uh, you know in polity and governance mostly 30 questions 20 to 25 questions are asked uh, in or sometimes only 18 or 16 sometimes 20 sometimes it exceeds 20 also so these topics uh, which are uh, last mile you know when your exams are near you should only concentrate on these topics you should study only those topics which were in use because mostly questions would be asked regarding them so if you are watching this video please go through them and I hope you will succeed thank you very much and till now I did not got any good views in it but I hope whoever watched them they will get benefited by this thank you very much for staying with me for so long